Your net worth is the most important financial number for you to know and to track regularly. I'm gonna show you how you can track it quickly and easily. Hey there, I'm Brittany Flammer with videos here all about budgeting and money saving tips. If you want to be able to afford to live a life you love, no matter what your income is, then hit the subscribe button and click that bell so you don't miss any of my videos. Your net worth is a simple equation. It's simply your assets minus your liabilities. In everyday English, it's how much you own minus everything you owe or all of your debt. But do not stress out, you do not have to be a math whiz. It's very straightforward. You can use pen, paper, and a calculator to figure it out. I prefer to use Google Sheets because it does all the math for me. I can access it on any device and it's really easy to use. I'm gonna show you how to track your net worth in under five minutes every month. And I'll show you on my spreadsheet, which you have access to in the description box below if you're interested. This is the actual spreadsheet that I use to calculate our net worth. However, these numbers are not ours, they're just fictitious. If you would like to see me do our net worth when I do my monthly budget video, let me know in the comments down below and I'd be happy to do that. I like to track my net worth monthly. You can do it however often you like. Some people do it weekly. Some people even do it daily. I think once a month is fine to get a good snapshot of where I am and how I'm progressing, but how often you do it is up to you. I like to put the date because I like to be consistent month to month. Because if I track it before we get paid one month and then after we get paid, it's not gonna be accurate. So I try to do it as consistently as possible. Go ahead and start with assets. These are the things we own. We'll start with cash assets. These are things like cash. If you stuff your cash under your mattress instead of taking it to the bank, add up how much cash you have on hand and put that in. It's also things that can be turned into cash really easily, like checkings account, checking accounts, savings accounts, online savings accounts, or even CDs, things that you can go to your bank and within two or three days have access to the cash. So with the assets, we'll go through. I'll just open up our bank account and look to see how much we have in our account and whatever's in our account that day, I will write it down. So, so today I had 425 in the checking account and the savings account, it was 485. Our emergency fund stayed the same. Um, and if we have an online savings account, I'll add that there. If there's an HSA, our HSA has 250 in it, so I'll put that on. If there's a CD, type in the amount or any other cash that you might have. These are just samples. Next, we move on to investment assets. These are investments that are yours that you own, but they take longer to turn into cash. Things like stocks or bonds or mutual funds or index funds, IRAs, any form of retirement funds. These are all investments that you own, but in order to turn them into cash, you'll have to sell the stock or the mutual funds or whatever it is. And usually it's a couple of weeks before you can have access to the cash. Your retirement funds aren't meant to be used until you retire. You can cash them out earlier than that with the penalty, but it's still gonna take a few weeks to actually get the cash. Onto our investments, mutual funds. You know it goes up and down. This month it went up for to, we'll say it went up to that. Um, Roth IRA, my husband has one, I have one. So let's say these went down and they're identical because we started at the same and they're invested in the same thing. Um, 401k, that went, we'll say that went up a little bit. Once again, for these, I just log into the account to see what the balance is and write the balance for that day. Um, and if you're like us and you had to open up your 401k and you had two different options and couldn't decide and chose, went with both, you'll get to see which option was better. Um, 529 for your kids, if you have other forms of retirement, index funds, if you, any investments you have, you can list here and it will total it for you. Now we move on to physical assets. These are tangible items that we can sell for cash. The largest one for most of us is going to be our home. So we're gonna figure out how much your home's worth. I like to go to Zillow and get a Zestimate. You can go wherever you want but find out how much your house is worth. If you were to list it to sale today, how much it would go for. 
Whatever, wherever you go to find out the value of your house, just use the same one every time you check your net worth so it's consistent. Also included are cars, and just like the house, it's how much your car is worth, how much you could sell it for today. If you need to, look up the Kelly Blue Book to get an idea of what your car is worth in its condition. Also can be included really anything you own that you could sell. If you've got a great stereo system you could sell or an awesome comic book collection, whatever it is that you can sell, you can include on this. You can get as nitty gritty as you want. I don't do too much, I just stick with the big things, but you can go as detailed as you want. Just make sure you include the same things every time you check your net worth. Houses are usually going to appreciate, so I just check to see what it's worth this month and whatever it says for this day, I write it down. A uh, car, every once in a while, it's gonna go down in value, so that's what it is now. Um, but maybe my husband actually has some tools. So whatever items you have, add them up and get the total. And then you're gonna total up all of your assets. This is the amount of everything you own. Now we're gonna focus on your liabilities. This one isn't quite as much fun. You're just gonna list out everything you owe money on. Mortgage, how much is left on your mortgage. If you have a car loan, how much you have left on your car loan. Any form of loan, personal loan, student loan, any place you owe money. Also credit cards. We pay our credit card off every month, but we still owe that money. So I list what's on our credit card as well. Since we're paying our mortgage every month, it's going to go down a little bit every month. And credit card, the balance, there's the balance. We just have the one credit card. If you have a car loan, student loans, any other loans, add them here and it will automatically calculate for you. Well, the debt you have, and these are your total liabilities. So to get your net worth, you're gonna do the total assets, subtract those total liabilities, and what you're left with is your net worth. So here you can see our net worth, 167,682. This is how much you're worth to a dollar amount. Now don't worry, intrinsically you're, you're priceless. You can't put a dollar in how much you're worth, but this is your net worth. And it is so important to track this. It doesn't matter what your net worth is right now. It could even be negative, but what matters is the direction you're heading. So if you regularly check it, hopefully you will be seeing progress and this will incentivize you to continue making good financial choices. So I highly recommend checking your net worth regularly, at least monthly. In the link, there is a description box to the net worth tracker I use. Go ahead and snag that. I also have lots of videos right over here on ways that you can save money to increase your net worth. The other great way to increase your net worth is by investing. If you'd like to see more videos about investing, let me know in the comments down below. Thanks so much. See you in the next video.